Hello friends! Before going forward and adding columns or fields in our tables, we should talk about data types. As for each column we are going to add in our tables, we have to use a data type. The reason is, data types will help protect our database from data of an invalid type being entered by specifying what kind of data we want to store in the table field. We will look how data types protect our database from invalid data in a bit more detail later when we start actually adding data to our tables. For now, let me first show some of the different categories of data types that we have access to. I said categories because many of these category data types that you see here, they have subtypes. Like in character, we have subtypes in numeric, we have subtypes, daytime, we have subtypes, and so on. Postgres supports a wide range of data types and we don't really memorize each and every of them. Off the top of my head, I can tell you that I personally used numbers, numeric types, character, boolean, and of course date and time, um, JSON and with arrays in some bigger projects. However, in this video, we are going to focus on just four of these data types. Characters, numbers, date, time, and boolean. Let's start off first with characters, as it is used a lot in our project. PostgreSQL uses character data types for storing text values and it has three character data types, namely char, varchar, and text, as you can see on your screen, character, or char. This data type specify that information stored in a column can contain strings up to n characters in length. If a string less than length n is stored, then the remaining string length is filled with space characters. For example, if you define a column username with type char 20, and you put in the very good dev, there will be 13 spaces added after we, variable character, or varchar. This data type specify that information stored in a column can contain strings up to n characters in length. However, in this case, if a string length less than n is stored, then the remaining string length isn't used. The same example. But now, the username column data type is set to varchar20. So now, a value of good day means it stores just good day without padding, and there are no space characters after v. The varchar data type has a variable length as opposed to fixed length string, what is char data type. It is possible to omit the size for the varchar data type. In this case, it can hold any number of characters up to 1 GB. And now text. Here it is straightforward. The text type is meant for unlimited data up to 1 GB. Store any length of string here. You know, there is no performance difference between these different character types, which is kind of unlike many other types of databases. So you should pick the type that best suits your application. You don't have to worry about trying to pick the exact correct value of char in order to optimize any performance or anything like that. Instead, in most situations, text or character writing should be used. It really doesn't matter behind the scenes. Putting on the limit right there, no performance benefit. It's just doing some validation for you to make sure that uh, you don't accidentally input some string that is really long. That's all. So now let's take a look at the user data table that we created in the last lesson. The table was empty, but we're going to add these three columns there. Username, email, and password. Okay, we could probably use varchar here that can contain strings up to 255 characters in length. As we know, usually usernames and emails or even passwords are not that long, we could limit ourselves. But like I said, there is no performance benefit. So that's why we will probably use text here. So that's pretty much it for character types. We will see more in action when we create these columns in the next lessons. Now let's take a look at some different Boolean types. Boolean types in general pretty straightforward. It is just talking about true, false, and null, unknown. But what you need to know is that we can actually provide different values to Postgres, tell it to treat it as a boolean, and it will automatically convert them into true or false. So, for example, we can provide the number 1 to Postgres. If you provide the number 1 and tell Postgres to treat it as a boolean, it will automatically convert into a boolean value of true, the same for a string of yes, or just a string t, or just the string y. Similarly, zero, no, or off, and the rest will be converted to false, as you can see on the screen. I think you get the idea. 
but you might be curious why. Only because in the past, in other databases, in some other different languages, these values like one yes were used rather than storing a boolean value of true or false. So this is kind of some backward support, some support for other databases, support for other languages. Besides true and false, boolean type columns can also store a value of null which means there is no value here. Not true, not false, it's nothing. Null is its own separate value. We will talk more about null in the future lessons, but right now we just need to understand that we can also use null here. Now to see an example, let's take a look at the task table here. The table has multiple columns here, but for now let's focus on the completed column. It tells us if the task is completed or not. So a good place to use boolean type, no? If the task is already completed, like here, the true value will be used. If it is not completed, it will be false. Like I said, it is very straightforward. So now let's take a look at our third data type, which is going to be numbers, numeric types. The first one is integer. There are three integer types for holding whole numbers. Small int, integer, and big int, big integer. These are the data types that allow us to store the integer value that does not contain any fraction part in it and or whole sum numbers. The most preferred data type for storing the integer values is integer, and you can see the range here. Small int is also used, and it is used only when the memory space is at stake, and you need to use your storage resources effectively. There is a set of numeric data types called serial that is also about storing numbers without a decimal point, but they also auto-increment. I mean, it starts off at 1, but every time you insert a new record, then automatically increments. When we don't have to store many values, then we can use small serial data type that has the range from 1 to 32,767. But if we know that our database will store a lot of rows, then we can use serial or big serial. And then the final subcategory is numbers with decimal points. There are two precision decimal types. numeric and decimal. They have user-defined precision and exact up to 131,072 and 16,383 digits before and after the decimal point, while the floating types, real and double, have variable precision with 6 and 15 decimal digit precision respectively. And finally, date, time, data types. In PostgreSQL to store dates, times, kinds of time zones, and timestamps, daytime data types are used. PostgreSQL provides you with the two temporal data types for handling timestamp. Here is the first one, timestamp, a timestamp without time zone. Look at the example, we have a column created on with data type timestamp. The timestamp data type allows you to store both date and time, however, it does not have any time zone data. It means that when you change the time zone of your database server, the timestamp value stored in the database will not change automatically. And now the second timestamp type. The timestamp TZ data type is a timestamp with a time zone, and it is a time zone aware date and time data type. Now let's take a look at the second example. Here we have date, time, and at the end, my time zone, my current time zone. Now about handling only dates. Date data type stores only the dates. When storing a date value, PostgreSQL uses the format that you see on your screen. Take a look at some different examples. You know, Postgres is fantastically flexible. You can provide in a string just about any format of date you could possibly imagine, and PostgreSQL is going to convert it into fixed date value for you. Look at these examples. We have 9 February 2023 here in the left side in different formats and here how Postgres converts. And lastly, we also have access to storing time. We can store a time without a time zone or time with a time zone as well. Let's take a look at time without time zone first. We can provide a time inside of a string. It can have an AM or PM designation, like you see in this example, 6, 5 AM or 5, 5 PM. We can add a 24 hour format time as well, like you see here, 22, 10. And Postgres is going to convert it to a 24 hour time for us. Again, we could provide just about any format you can imagine, like in date case, 
but there is a, a smaller set of formats here. In addition to just storing a time, we can also store a time with a time zone. So any value you put in will be converted to the appropriate UTC value. So for example, if a specified 6.05 a.m. AM Central European Standard Time is a standard time of Central and parts of Western Europe, which is one hour ahead of coordinated universal time UTC. It will be converted into 60500 plus 1. The plus 1 right there indicates one hour ahead of UTC time. Worth to mention that there is also an interval data type. This data type stores a time interval and allows you to store and manipulate a period of time in years, months, days, and etc. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's start using data types in our database, starting from the next lesson.